Yo people, my name is Alex and welcome to this Unity 3D tutorial on how to make a speech bubble and dialogue system and I'll just show you guys what we're going to be making so we've got a speech bubble that pops up types the text in a typewriter like fashion and you can either click to continue or once the text is finished typing out you can press enter to continue and there is actually audio audio to give the player a bit of feedback when they click so yeah, let's basically just show you guys how we do this Okay guys, I'm just going to keep this real simple. So I've got a new scene here. We've got a player cube, an NPC cube, and then just a floor cube. Okay, so there are going to be a few things that we need, such as the speech bubble, and then we also need Text Mesh Pro. So you can either grab that from the Asset Store, or by t just type in Text Mesh Pro in search and download it and install, or you can just go to Window, Package Manager, and uh, find it this way, and then just install it. Okay, so for the speech bubble, I just went over to Photoshop, and I just used the Shape tool, just drew out a speech bubble, and added a stroke to it. I'll leave a link to this in the description, but you can use any image editing software to create this. Once you've got your speech bubble, just drag and drop it into the Unity Assets folder. Then we need to make a few changes just so that this can work properly. As right now, it's a bit narrow, a bit slim. And then we need to go to Full Rect. Actually, do you know what? We could actually probably get away with just doing this in single. So, right, so what we're gonna do is just open up the Sprite Editor. So just apply those settings. Just open up the Sprite Editor, and then we just wanna change the edge boundaries of the speech bubble okay then the next thing we need to do is also change where it scales up from and we'll use this point here let's drag the speech bubble into the scene and then what we want to do is actually change the draw mode to sliced and then because we did change the edge boundaries we can actually just rescale it without it really changing the look of the edges awesome Okay, so next thing you want to do is just position your speech bubbles where you would like them to be. Next thing we need to do is basically add some text components to the speech bubbles, obviously, so they can display the text and add a continue button so that we can trigger the next interaction in the dialogue. We're going to start off by adding a UI canvas to the player speech bubble. And we do this just by right clicking and then come down to UI and then canvas. And we won't do it for the MP speech bubble because we'll just duplicate this over across, which can use this as just uh, its position for reference kind of thing uh, so what we're going to do is just instead of having it in screen space overlay we're going to change that to world space and then as it's huge right now it's just I mean I don't actually think it matters I mean I, usually I get this to around the same size Okay, so once you've got your canvas set up, the next thing we want to do is actually implement some UI text. So we're just going to use the Text Mesh Pro as we downloaded that earlier. So what you're going to want to do is just resize this. Okay, as I want the text to be displayed within the canvas, possibly up to about there. I'm going to change the font size to something like 5. Okay, even 5 is a bit too big. Bloody hell. Okay. <laughs> In which case once you've got some dummy text there you can see that your size fits up the next thing we want to do is actually create the continue button so what we want to do is come just right click UI button as you can see annoyingly this is incredibly huge as well Okay, so once, once you've got your button position, what you want to want to do is actually get rid of this text that it comes with and replace it with some text mesh pro text. And awesome. It's got a little continue button. And that's basically how it would look. It's actually not going to be on all the time as we don't want the player to be able to click continue while it's typing. So what we do is we'll just disable it and re-enable it as the player stops talking. Okay, so now that we've got our button, last thing we want to do is quickly just change its highlighted color to something like, maybe if, yeah, like a green, and then its pressed color to maybe like a, a darker green. If we test that, see we've got a button. Doesn't do anything yet, but we got a button. Okay, so now it's time for us to duplicate this, and what we do is grab that, 
use the component values of the transform, post them across, get rid of that. As you can see, the text is facing the wrong way. So what we do is just come into here and just change the scale to make negative one. Just move it across. There we go. Now it's time to get into the code and actually get them working. But before we do that, what we're actually going to do is just disable the buttons as we don't want them always displayed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just create a C sharp script. Call this one Dialog Manager. So I'm going to create an empty game object and call that Dialog Manager. And then we will so that's on there and then let's open that up as we're using TextMesh Pro you have to use the TextMesh Pro namespace so that allows us to have variables such as TextMesh Pro UI so what we want to do is actually create a variable to the text the player dialog text so we'll serialize field private and this is where we find a text mesh pro and the one we're using is the UGUI and we're just going to call that player dialog text we're also going to have to do the same for the NPC dialogue text. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need is, of course, the sentences. So, what is actually going to be said? So, we're going to go private string, and it's going to be we're going to use an array as it's going to be multiple sentences as its dialogue. Uh, we're going to call that player dialogue sentences. We also need to keep track of which sentence we're on, so we're going to need a private integer. Call that player index, and then we're also going to have NPC, a private integer called NPC index. We're going to use a serialized field private float called typing speed. It's going to be start off at 0.05f. Okay, and then as this is a dialogue, we also actually want to keep track of who's going to speak first. So we're going to have another serialized field, private ball, and we'll say player speaking first. So now that we've got our references, the last ones we're going to need, well, not the last, but the ones for now, will be. So it's more serialized fields, private game object, player, continue button, and serialized field, private game object, NPC, continue button. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a coroutine to type out the sentences that are in the player dialogue sentences array. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go private i enumerator. Call that type. Oh gosh, type player dialog. So coroutines require a yield statement to work properly. So yield return new wait four seconds. And we're going to use that of typing typing speed. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to create a for each loop that will iterate for through each character that will call letter in the player dialog sentences at the index of player index. So what we actually need to do is use a function which is going to be called to character array and that way we can read each character from the player dialog strings. Okay. So what we actually want to do here is say player dialog text dot text plus equals a letter okay what that does is just basically add the next letter in the sentences to the player dialog text so it just displays it in kind of like a typewriter kind of fashion just one letter at a time uh, with an interval of typing speed okay so the next thing we need to do is create one of these four the NPC as well. Type NPC dialog in NPC dialog sentences 
npc index npc dialog text dot text correct so now we've got a way to type the player dialog and the npc dialog okay the issue is we just need a, a way to call it so what we're actually going to do is create a, another method called and we're actually going to make this public so that it can be called from outside but we're going to call this start dialog and here is where we're going to use the player speaking first boolean so we're going to check if the player is speaking first then we're going to do start coroutine and we're going to start the type player dialog else that means the npc is speaking first in which case we will start the coroutine of type npc dialog so at first we'll just call that method from the start function so if i avoid start we we'll say start dialog so now just to show you guys what this is actually doing we're going to actually need to clear the npcs and the players dialog go to the dialog manager and we're going to need to assign the variables now at this time i'll just probably just make some time just to actually label everything accordingly cool so once everything is named accordingly just go back to the dialog manager so for the player dialog text we'll pass in the player dialog the npc the npc the sentences we'll leave them as they are right now and then the continue button we will pass in the speech bubble continue button and the npc speech bubble button cool now i actually would like them to display the other way around so what we do is I'm just going to take that, put that here. As you can see, this uh, dialogue script is actually getting a bit big. So what we might actually do is just come back and just quickly add some header attributes. So, and for these dialogue sentences, what we do is actually pass in a text area each of these and what that does is gives you a bit more space with the strings awesome it looks a little bit easier to use and a bit easier to see what's going on in the, with the script next thing you want to do is uh, actually write some sentences to display okay so when you've got a few sentences i don't even read them i don't even know what i was thinking but basically let's just test this so if we press play okay as you can see the npc started speaking first and that was due to the fact that we did not tick the player speaking first. So if we play that again, then the player speaks first, to types out the sentence. Okay, so the thing as you can see is that uh, the continue button isn't there, so we have no way to continue yet. So the next, that's the next thing. Go back to Visual Studio, and then basically what we need to do is at the end of when we finish typing the dialogue, we just want to say player continue button dot set active true and then at the end of this one the PC play continue button dot set active is true so now okay so I'm actually gonna decrease that typing speed because it's still taking up its time as you can see it works but there's no way to continue and also it stays green after we click so just to change that behavior i'm just going to go to the button come down to it, it says navigation and if we go from automatic to none just do the same awesome 